DNA Charge, Overdrive. Akumon Double Warp Digivolt 2! It's morphin' time! Hello, this is Santa here, and welcome to my review of the Figurized Standard Amplified Shine Greymon from Digimon Savers. This is probably the most surprising Digimon model kit to date, and also probably my favorite. Though I am a little biased, Digimon Savers, also known as Digimon Data Squad in its English dub, is my favorite Digimon show. And it gets, like, no merch whatsoever. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the first Digimon Savers slash Data Squad merchandise to come out since the show last aired, I think, in Korea? And it's only the second Shine Greymon uh, full-size figure after the Digivolving one that I believe was also only released in Korea. So... It's kind of a long time coming to get something for savers, and I hope it's an indication of more savers to come. In addition to that, I do believe the reason why we got a Shine Greymon model kit was because Shine Greymon is a very popular card and type to run in the Digimon card game, especially in the early expansion. It was always like Shine Greymon is like your best card you get, and people built entire decks around him. And that kind of thing, I think, led to this kit's existence. Because honestly, while I do love Savers, and many other have, it is kind of one of the lesser-known Digimon shows. So to see a model kit of this, even before Frontier or something more recent like Ghost Game, is kind of surprising, but definitely welcome. It is under the figureized standard Amplified line, which you can sort of see the logo if I move the glare. Amplified is essentially taking the designs and then making them more mechanical. Uh, if you look at the Amplified War Greymon, for example, compared to the Figurized Standard War Greymon, you can see that it has a more mechanical design versus the more anime-like design. However, characters like Shine Greymon are already pretty intricately designed, so I don't think the Amplified really did much for it, but just gave us a chance to get a nice, large size Shine Greymon, as the Amplified kits are usually more expensive and larger scale. Here's the beautiful packaging art. You can see Shine Greymon with the Geo Grey Sword there. And overall, I think that the box art is just terrific, and I absolutely love it. Now, I did want to point out uh, some things in the instruction book, as this is a model kit, you do have to build it. It is complex uh, in the sense that it's more complex than a figureized standard. There's definitely more parts going on uh, with the kit. Uh, here's an overview of all of the runners that you'll have to work with. And in general, it took me, you know, not a long time to build, but definitely longer than one of the, uh, the standard kits that I've reviewed in the past. The standards only take me, you know, a couple hours. This one took me a lot longer, uh, in, especially when you get down to this with the tail. Uh, his tail, in order to articulate it, has a wire that runs in and out through these two pieces. Like, you start it here, and then you have to run it through all of those. That took a long while, and then I spent a good uh, couple hours, I think about, about two, two and a half hours, on these wings. Uh, not just because you have to put all the parts of the wings together, but you also have to put stickers on both sides of all of them. And that's another thing with the tail, too. The tail has a ton of stickers all throughout it as well. So those, I think, are the two most complex parts of it, but nothing you can't handle if you are, you know, mildly experienced in model kits. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this necessarily as a first-time uh, builder. But I do like, uh, in addition to the, the bios here, which I'll put up on the screen, uh, it does mention, which I think is interesting, it, it does mention uh, Agumon Digivolved into a mega level, uh, so they're using mega level, which is the English term uh, for, for this level of Digimon, um, by Digisoul Charging slash Overdriving. So they put Digisoul Charging, which is the Japanese term, and then Overdriving, which is the English term. Then it says, uh, Overdriving the Digisoul, born from Masaru Damon's uh, determination to protect his partner. But it doesn't mention Marcus Damon, just Masaru's. Um, so it's kind of like, it made sure to put both Digisoul Charging and Overdriving. Um, it's good. It's good English translation. It doesn't feel like machine translated. Uh, and then it has kind of a thing about the articulation, which I'll let you pause and read if you care about that. And then it also has this thing about the Geo Grey Sword. Um, the Geo Grey Sword's gorgeous appearance has been recreated with jewel stickers and PET plastic sheets. Uh, and then the pullout joints help with that. This uh, thing here that it mentions about the uh, jewel stickers, I did want to bring up because some may not be familiar with this. So it comes with normal decals, uh, a lot of them particularly like most of the blue highlights and some of the silver. 
Uh, this is definitely more than you'd see on a, a standard, but an amplified, it, it's more common. I did not use these circular ones uh, because those are clear plastic overlays. I felt like those stickers were a little redundant. Um, you know, you can apply them if you'd like. But what they meant by jewel sticker is they give you two, which I'm glad they give you two in case you lose one, two of these little, uh, it's hard to get the camera to focus. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. It's these two uh, raised jewel pieces that are glued on the back, and then you can stick them like a sticker onto the Geo Gray Sword. And they give you two of them. It only requires one. And then this is what it was talking about with the PET uh, stickers. Um, you can kind of see that it's not as flexible, but essentially these are small sheets of plastic that have the design in them and then also are glued on the back. So if you're applying these, they're a lot stickier than normal stickers, but they have a, ten a, a lower chance of tearing uh, when you're putting them on, which I think is really good. It's something Bandai's been doing more with some complex details, like the Real Grade Gal Gygar's uh, Windows on Liner Gal use a similar thing where it's kind of like a thin sheet of plastic as opposed to just a thin sheet of paper. Uh, so it doesn't tear when you're doing these more intricate decals. So here he is, Shine Greymon. Now, personally speaking, I think he is my favorite of the Sabres Megas, though I think all four of them are terrific. Mirage Galgamon is probably a close second. I know that sounds like I'm just going with the the way the show portrays them, but I just, I love these designs. Um, you know, and no offense to Rosemon or Ravemon, I, I love them too. I just like Shine Greymon the most, I think. Uh, and it's just, it's one of those things where typically I kind of go for the more bestial uh, versus the more dragon type uh, with Digimon, but with Frontier and Savers, I'm, I'm kind of into the, the main red guy uh, more so than the, than the blue guy, which is a little bit opposite of what uh, I normally go for. But I just, I love Shine Greymon, and looking at it here, you know, with some of the other amplified kits, you can go, oh, that's an amplified. I look at this, I'm like, this is just Shine Greymon. Um, I'll actually, you know, let me bring in the animation model picture of Shine Greymon. So you can kind of see where, yeah, there is some more detail added to this kit. It's not so much that it feels like a different design, like some of the amplifieds are, which is great, because I think you couldn't do this guy in figureized standard due to his size and the fact that figureized standard t tends to keep to a lower price point. Okay, so I removed his arm so we can see the helmet a little bit better, but here's his head design. Uh, you can see the two red horns here, the silver one in the middle. Uh, what's really surprising was that the lines over the eyes, the red part, is actually separated plastic. It's a layer underneath the plastic of uh, the gold helmet, but then the eyes are actually decals as well as these blue highlights. Anytime you see these shiny blue highlights, especially in the shoulders, those are also decals, which uh, makes a lot of sense. But the neck, once again, the red part here is decals instead of plastic because it's just white plastic under there. But you can see how the color variation between the plastic color here and the decals there is not that much. So it's very not noticeable. And in general, they did a good job making the stickers not wrap around too much. So that way it doesn't look off when you're uh, looking at the design of the kit, which I think is really, really cool overall. I think the head especially turned out nice. Moving down the torso here, you can see we've got uh, the blue gem. There's a sticker to go inside that. I felt like it was redundant. I kind of like the way that the silver kind of pokes through the clear blue. Uh, and then again, any of these little small details are going to be stickers, but the red lines are plastic color. Uh, which I think is just really fantastic. As someone that's built Gundam kits for a long time, I do love how Bandai's just really pushing it with the figureized kits to have more plastic color separation as opposed to uh, just using stickers to fill in any of those red lines, for example. Like all that, except for that part right in the middle, that part right there, sticker. But again, you probably couldn't have you probably couldn't have noticed if I didn't point it out. Uh, but yeah, just really cool. And down to the feet, I think they're probably the most. Uh, the trickiest stickers to put on were these gray uh, pieces here. They co come around the back. So they come around the side, and they come around the back, and they come around to the edge here. Lining them up and figuring out what direction to put them in was kind of tricky, and the instructions weren't super helpful with that. So just take your time and see if you can line up how it looks there uh, if you end up getting this kit. Uh, the toes are also here, uh, which they are. They come together, but unlike the Machine Dramon where they come together, you can put them in together. You do have to cut them separate, um, so that way you can get some minor movement out of it. And then the bottom of the feet actually do have the red, again, plastic color as well, which is really, really cool. Looking at the arms, I think the worst sticker on here is probably this gray piece on the hand. But again, it's so minor, I wouldn't even uh, probably notice it too much. Uh, the plastic separation, again, is really good all throughout. And then up here at the bicep, you got plastic into sticker. It looks pretty clean overall. Uh, in addition to that, the shoulder spikes and everything look really, really nice. Uh, it just, 
it, it's a really fantastic looking kit overall. So let's look at some of the more complex parts, starting with the tail. Uh, the tail, essentially, like I said uh, in the instruction manual, it's got a wire through it, so you can attempt to pose it. It doesn't like smoothly pose because the plastic does kind of run into itself, but you can pose it and you can adjust it. More specifically, it goes left and right better than it goes up and down. There also is a joint up here, which uh, helps rotate it as well. And this is all red plastic, and then you put the little white spots on it. And then we have the little sunburst at the bottom of the tail, which looks really, really cool and really nice. And then we got the wings. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to remove the wings, which is really easy to do because they just plug into the back here. Um, that back gem also had a sticker, but I left it out. Same with these. I kind of liked, again, how the color through the lens looked better than the sticker. Uh, but in general, you've got the kind of fire design to it. This is ball jointed, so it can adjust a little bit if you need to. And then this is also articulated as well. But more specifically, here is the wings. They all fold down. Uh, you, you can kind of line them up, look, make them look nice and neat. Almost all of them are articulated. You had to put all the stickers in, but it looks really, really nice. And you can also adjust these pieces as well. So I kind of like to have sort of that look going on most times. And that's probably how we'll leave them because he is stable with them down, as you can see. Um, but, you know, if you have the tail kind of up, he can start to tip a little bit just because of the nature of his feet. Uh, but in general, I think the wings did turn out pretty terrific. And that is a lot of plastic. And probably the main reason why I'd say they needed to do him as amplified as opposed to doing them in standard because that's a lot of parts right there. All right, let's go over articulation because this guy does have a lot. I did remove the wings to make this a little bit easier on myself. Um, he does have a ball joint connection at the bottom of the neck and at the top of the neck, so you get a nice range of movement. You get shoulders that rotate here. Uh, the shoulders have this mechanism where they can pull forward, and they pull forward pretty good. And then you also have a, a rotation here. Now, you may notice this, this just got a little loose. It does like to slip off, at least on mine. This, this is going to be kind of a mileage may vary thing. It sort of likes to slip off that connection sometimes. But you can pull this out, and you can pull out the shoulder a little bit. So you can get really far forward uh, reaching poses. And that's how you can get him to hold his sword, which, of course, we'll take a look at in a minute here. Uh, you can get him to hold his sword with two hands, which is really, really cool. Uh, you just I find that you'll end up just tweaking that a lot. Uh, just to keep it kind of in place um, back and forth. Bicep swivel, then you got an elbow. The elbow bends like this. If you want more bend, you can rotate it here, and then you can get just more of a bend on it. And then also it's got a standard ball-jointed wrist, which is pretty good. Uh, you got an upper torso ball joint. Oh, whoop. there you go. That's a big old ball joint. And then I believe you also get a rotation down here at the bottom part. He's got kind of a thin waist. It's hard to reach in there, but you can adjust that. There's no up and down on either of those. Hips that move out, hips that move uh, forward and back. They actually can 360 because there's nothing blocking them. This piece moves, uh, thigh swivel. He's got a double jointed knee, but, well, it's not really a double jointed knee. It looks like a double jointed knee. It's actually just a single joint. Just a really deep bend regardless. The design wouldn't allow for any more than that. Anyways, so you got left and right, uh, up and down, side to side, and then a toe joint, and then also the toes move as well. So you can kind of get them in a walking pose pretty easily, which is pretty cool. And then, like I said with the tail, you can pose it up, down, uh, left, right, rotate it, bend it back, bend it back. It's It's got a good range of motion on this guy, which is good because he does come with his main weapon, the Geo Gray Sword. So just in case any of his powers weren't enough, the Geo Gray Sword comes in to finish the job. The Geo Gray Sword is such a cool design. Uh, as you can see, I just wanted to do this before we looked at the sword more. It is taller than him. Uh, even taller than the tops of his wings. His wings are at max capacity. This thing is still bigger. Another reason why this guy really had to be an amplified. But let's move Shine Graham on out of the way so that way he doesn't interrupt our look at his beautiful sword. Uh, the sword is also iconic uh, to the second opening of Savers because it, it kind of uh, appears in the middle and then it kind of like fades out before the opening begins, which I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, it's really, really neat. Uh, in the middle here, you can see we've got uh, the gemstone that was added as a sticker. It's kind of soft. A little, it's a little soft, but it, it fits in there. Fits in there good. You could put the other gemstone on the back here. It may not, may or may not come into interaction with the handle. Uh, it probably won't. You probably will have clearance, but I just left it off just so I don't have a problem. But you could put it on that side. This is the handle for those curious in its current state. This handle, you can just, I like that it's removable, easily removable, so that way you can put it in the hand and then plug the, the handle in, and then that way you can manipulate the sword 
which I think is pretty awesome overall. The uh, PET stickers. So this is what those look like. Uh, you know, it doesn't get probably ridged into the sculpted detail underneath as much. And of course, you can still paint this if you wish instead of using these. But I like the way that they're in here. They're very sturdy. Uh, using PET stickers for this, if it was standard stickers, you could have torn every one of these little connections. So I'm glad that it was just a PET sticker across the way. Very nice, very thick, holds really, really well. And in general, it's pretty sturdy as these are double layered uh, pieces on the sword. Um, so I love the design of it and I love the way it looks. Now, of course, uh, there is an alternate mode for this. I can't remember how much this was used in the actual Sabres anime, but you can split the Geo Gray sword in two. Um, so you just got to kind of get in here and then give it a good old yank. Boom, there you go. You want to remove the centerpiece and you can attach uh, each of them a separate handle. So that way you can have this split look for the Geo Gray sword there where you can carry those. And then there's also these holster pieces, which of course I'm going to show all this on the figure so you can store them on his waist, which is really, really cool. But I think we got to get this thing... You know, let's take a look at this thing, of course, with the Geo Gray Sword. And what's nice, too, is you can't screw it up because there's a little notch right there, and there's a little ridge. So when you're combining them, you can make sure you put uh, one on each side. They are identical. You don't have to worry about uh, how it looks unless you screw up one of the stickers. But they come together. I always kind of make sure it's lined up so I don't push it in all the way until it's together. And look at that. It's so cool because it looks like it's one single piece. You'd never know it would split, and I think that's just such great design. So he doesn't come in any alternate hands, he just comes with these uh, fists that have slots in them. So you want to pull the top part of the hand off, and then you can take your handle, put it in whichever position you want. I'm going to do this for this pose, push this back on, and then that way uh, you have the handle in place. It's nice and secure, and then you can, of course, attach the Geo Gray Sword. And there you go, you got kind of a summoning position. And then here you can position it up so it's on the back of his hand if you want it kind of in a uh, swinging position, which is really, really cool. And then, of course, because of the articulation, you can do the, uh, the over-the-top sword stabby into the ground thing. Though you would like to make it more dynamic, you can put them up on a stand. If you remove the tail, they do include this piece, which goes in, and they can put the tail back on. I kind of like that. It makes it really clean. It's got a stand peg there so you can stick them into an uh, action base. This is just an action base four. Uh, so then you can have them kind of like more dynamically sort of leaning into it. Um, let's see if I can adjust the angle here. Preparation is not always my strong suit. But yeah, so you can kind of have them very awkwardly because I'm, I'm doing this on camera like this. But if you want to have them up on a stand, I can probably put them up higher than this. Uh, you can totally do that and you have that option, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, the fact that you engineered it specifically to hold the sword with two hands, that's amazing. And then here he is, the two sword configuration, which I think looks really cool. And it's a little bit more manageable pose wise, because uh, it's not as large, but I do like it. Plus you can just slide these in and out of the hands without having to open up the back of them, which is definitely a positive, but I love the way that looks. And then of course you want to store them on the waist. You can plug these parts in. There's these ports on the legs. Uh, there's also the same exact ports on the inside of the leg if you really wanted to, um, but you can plug them in and then you can just store the swords like that. So you got that going on, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll do the opposite side here. Unfortunately, even though there's these ports on the arms, I thought maybe they'd make this like kind of an attachment to where you could just, um, you could like, for example, like put this in the holder and then plug it onto the arm, but the hole's too small. So I don't know what the point of those holes are on the arms because they don't seem to do anything. Um, maybe they're prepping for the future, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. But there you go. You got kind of a at rest shine gray mon stored the swords kind of thing. We could uh, collapse the wings down even. So it looks like he's like, yeah, I'm walking away from this fight. The guy who I fought isn't. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it looks pretty cool. I like the modularity of the Geo Gray sword instead of just having the big old sword. He has some options with it. So I've mentioned that Shine Greymon is a big boy, but I haven't mentioned how he is in relation to other Digimon figures. So here we have figureized standard Magnamon, where you can see that the uh, amplified... Shine Greymon is much larger uh, than Magnamon. But then here is my previous amplified purchase, Machine Germon, who is a little bit larger than Shine Greymon. Uh, I never reviewed Machine Germon, but I did review Magnamon. I'm plugging these videos because they don't do that well. Um, but, you know, Machine Germon here was the first amplified I picked up because he looks just like the anime design, maybe a little bit more detailed. 
Same with this guy, um, but I do prefer the anime styling overall. Now, this is an accurate scale because Digimon scale is a nightmare I don't want to get into, but it's kind of neat to see uh, he's kind of like a mid-size between the two of them, uh, which would be pretty cool overall, uh, especially because I think this guy, part of him is being reused for the Metal Greymon that's coming up, so it should be interesting to see how Metal Greymon looks because if he's this big and then he's got wings on top of it, that's going to be crazy. But it's nice to, uh, so these are my two Amplifieds. That's one of my standards. Um, I like these kits. I like these kits a lot. And then last comparison is here's a mega of a dragon looking Digimon. Um, there is a SH Figure Arts Dukemon Gallantmon. So you can see that while Shine Greymon, of course, is a larger size kit and he is an Amplified kit, he doesn't look too out of place with like Dukemon Gallantmon. Uh, and in fact that, the, again, it's that kind of weird cross compatibility. It's like I talked about in the Anjumon and Anjumon video, where it does seem like there is, whoever's in charge of Digimon over at Bandai, which I think the guys that are big Digimon fans, they're sort of deciding like, this should be amplified because it fits amplified. This should be figure art because we can do uh, a little bit more with it. This can be standard because it goes with that. I think that in general, there is kind of a, an effort to not overlap as much. Like, yes, there is an amplified and a figure eye standard of Dukemon, who also has a figure art. Um, that's because Dukemon is popular. Uh, but it's nice to see that, like, you know, I put amplified Shine Greymon next to figure art's Dukemon. It doesn't look that out of place. Um, you know, Magnemon looks a little small, but he's also kind of a smaller level. He's, he's an armor Digivolve versus a Mega versus a Mega. So... It's kind of forming this really cool kind of eclectic Digimon display, and I'm really digging it. So keep going, Bandai. And then lastly, here he is next to the packaging art for the BE Memory Dragonic Blaze that had Shine Greymon on it. Just so anyone's saying, oh, hey, they did that BE Memory, that counts as Savers merch. Do you see a Savers logo on this? This is the Digimon Evolution Vote BE Memory Special Selection Volume 1 Dragonic Blaze. Unlike the other uh, dim cards for like Tamers and Frontier, those are branded as such. This is just Digimon. It just happens to feature Sabres guys on the cover. But there's no Sabres logo, so it's not Sabres merch. Even though I did buy it right away because I was like, oh my god, Shine Greymon. Figure Eye Standard Amplified Shine Greymon is not only a terrific model kit, it's a great example of how I would say Digimon is in a better place than it ever has been. Savers for Bandai for Toei was considered a failure and they didn't touch it for the longest time. So to come back and do a fancy model kit of the main Digimon's mega form is a huge win for Digimon fans. And in fact, we've been seeing this effort in general to be representing all the Digimon shows, not just adventure, not just the occasional Tamers thing, but doing more stuff. So it makes me really happy to see something like this. I'm very, very, very happy with this kit. I hope that we get to see more. I would almost say that a Shine Greymon Burst Mode is in the bag because they just have to change some parts and they recolor it and they call it a day. Someone already made a custom even, I think, out there. I saw that on, on social media. So in general, I do think that we're going to at least get a Shine Greymon Burst Mode, but I kind of hope this kit does well that we can also get a Mirage Galgamon, a Rosemon, and a Ravemon. Even if Rosemon and Ravemon end up as standards, it would work for me. I do think Mirage Galgamon probably work as an Amplified. However they want to give it, I'm happy to get more Saber stuff, because I love this show, and I love these designs, and it's nice to see them finally get representation and attention, and it's probably the Digimon card game's fault, which is not a bad thing. That card game has done a lot for the Digimon franchise lately. In general, I am excited for the future kits that are coming out for Figure Eye Standard, and I will be reviewing Black War Greymon, as well as Amplified Metal Greymon. So on that note, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future Digimon videos for Digivices model kits and figure arts. I keep making them. They don't perform super well on the channel, so if you want to help me out, go watch some of the previous videos. If you already seen them, go watch them again. They're usually pretty short. There's a whole playlist that you should be seeing very soon at this video if you haven't already. Hitting the like button and leaving a comment also helps out. And let me know what Digimon model kit you want to see Bandai make next. Check out my Discord at the link below at the sign up Discord protocol if you want to continue discussing Digimon and more. And check out my live streams here on this YouTube channel Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern. You can find me on social media if you like at SoundOut12. You can find my awesome graphic designer on Twitter as well as Discord at DarkClaw643. And you can find Hero Club at Hero-Club.com for Digimon news and anime news and more. So until next time, this is SoundOut saying goodbye.